time in section 10.3, um, you're going to have to find some missing angle measures. So here's what I want you to see, okay? In this setup, there's a few different pieces that you need to know what they are, okay? Um, first of all, you can actually put a perfect circle around this figure because it's a regular hexagon. Do you remember what a regular hexagon is? All sides and all angles are what? Congruent, okay? So if this is a regular hexagon, that means that all these sides are congruent, all of the angles are congruent. So what we can do, if I draw in all these dotted lines that you see, I get six triangles that are all identical. Do you see that? Okay, so what you could do is you could find the area of those six triangles, find one triangle, multiply by six, and you'll have the area of the whole figure. Now, rather than have to do that, we give you a formula that does that for you, okay? But if you forget the formula or you forget how to use the formula, you can do it that way also. Okay, here's the pieces you need to know to be able to work with the formula for sure. Um, first of all, this is a radius, right? If I were to draw a circle around it, this represents the radius to the center of the circle. Um, that's a radius. There's another segment that you're going to use way more than a radius in this setup, and that's the one that doesn't go to the circle anymore. It's the one that cuts each of those triangles in half. It's this line right here. And this line is a weird word. It's called an apothem. Um, and that's the one you're going to use a bunch, right? Because that's the height of one of those triangles. So apothem, um, apothem always has to be the perpendicular distance from a side to the center of your figure. Okay, I said that backwards, center to side. You know what I mean there. Um, okay, so here's the first thing you're gonna have to do with this stuff. We're gonna find the measure of all of these angles, and if it helps you to see it like equally spaced, you could draw all of these in I just didn't draw that last one in because I didn't really need it, but you can draw all the dotted lines in if you want. What you should see there is there are five angles, one, two, three, four, and five, right? Those five angles make a circle. Do you see that? If I take them all with the same center, you have a circle there. What do you know about a circle? How many degrees in a circle? 360. Okay, so if there are 360 degrees that form that circle and you have five identical angles, if you draw all of your radii in, you can find the measure of angle one by doing 360 divided by five, right? So that's going to be 72 degrees for the measure of angle one. You see how I got that? There's five angles there, 360 divided by five. Now, once the apothem gets drawn in, what does it do to that 72? It cuts it in half, right. So if I draw an apothem in, it's going to cut that 72 into two equal parts. So we would say angle two is 72 divided by two, or 36 degrees. Okay, so now if this is 36, how can we find angle 3? Right, so you have a triangle here now. Okay, that means that 90 plus 36 plus the measure of angle 3 has to equal 180 degrees. So if I take away the 90 and 36 or take away the 126, that would make the measure of angle 3 54 degrees. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so you're gonna have to use some of those concepts, those ideas, pretty much every time you do the area of a regular polygon. What's a regular polygon again? All sides and angles congruent. congruent. Okay, so here's the formula for area of a regular polygon. It's area equals one half times A times P. What was A again? The apophthegm. P, what's P typically? Perimeter. perimeter. So P is the perimeter of the regular polygon. Okay, so we're going to do a problem um, where you're not even going to see the figure, but you're going to have enough information to be able to find the area of some figure that they're talking about. Okay, one half AP. So here's what the problem says find the area of a regular decagon. What does decagon mean? Ten sides, Ten sides. with a 12.3 inch apothem and eight inch sides. So if my formula is area equals one-half times A times P, do you know what A will be? Yes. What is it? 12.3. 12 so they told us the apothem, 12.3. Okay, we know we have to multiply by a half. We have to find P. Now think about this. It's a regular decagon, which means all the sides are congruent. It's a decagon, which means you have 10 sides, and they told us the length of the sides. What is your perimeter? 80, 80 right? Perimeter would be 10 times 8. There are 10 sides. They're each 8 inches long. So 80 is your P, okay? That means we're multiplying this by 80, and you literally plug that into your calculator, one half times 12.3 times 80, and you get 492 square inches. Does that make sense? So sometimes it's pretty straightforward where you just have to find the perimeter by multiplying, and then you plug everything in. Other times it's less straightforward and you have a little more work to do. And that's what we're gonna do for this, this next example. Um, this tends to be the type of problem, these next two really, are the type that can be a little more challenging. So if you checked out, check back in um, so we can figure this out. All right, so example three here. It says find the area of the regular hexagon below. So we know we're using what formula? A times P, right? This is a regular hexagon. So that right there should say one half AP, okay? Um, do you know A or P right now? No. We don't know either one, but which one can you find fairly simply? Uh, P. P, okay? So if this is 10 and there are six sides, what's your perimeter? Perimeter is going to be 60 because you're just doing 10 times 6. Okay, so we know our perimeter. We need to find the apothem, which is not even drawn in for us. We're gonna draw it in. So here's what you need to do with this problem. And I think this is where people struggle, is they think, okay, well, here's my apothem. How the heck do I find it? What, anyone see what you need to do? You gotta make the triangle, right? Um, so if I draw in this triangle, um, the first thing you need to find on these is the angle. Okay, if you don't have the angle, you can't find the apothem. The nice thing is you're going to see a lot of hexagons and you're going to just remember what that angle is because you're going to do it a bunch of times. But for now, let's go through the process of how you find that hexagon. So if I were to draw in all of the radii, how many of those central angles do we have? Six, right? How do you find the measure of the angle then? 
360. Right. So you're going to start with 360 divided by 6, which is a 60 degree angle. So this is 60, and this is 60, and this is 60, all the way around. Okay? We drew in this line, which does what to our 60? Cuts it in half. So that means this angle is actually 30. And if this is 30 and this is 90, what's that bottom angle? 60. So we have a 30, 60, 90. Do you know any of the sides of that 30, 60, 90? Uh, yes. Which one? The bottom. The bottom. What is this bottom side? Five. It's five. It's half the side of the figure. If the whole side is 10, then this one's five. Okay? Which makes our apothem what? In a 30, 60, 90, what is this apothem going to be? 5 rad 3. Okay? Feels pretty easy when I'm talking you through it, right? When I'm not talking you through it, you have to remember all of those steps. So make sure you start by finding the angle and then look at what information you have from there. Um, so if we're going to do one half AP, and we already said our perimeter is 60, um, what's the apothem? 5 rad 3. Now you can just take it and plug it in. So 1 half times 5 rad 3 times 60. And you're going to plug in everything but the radical so that we can keep it in simplest radical form. So you're going to plug in 1 half times 5 times 60. When you do that, you get 150, and then you can attach your rad 3, and how would you label it? Meters squared. Meters squared. It's area, so square meters. Okay. Questions on that? Yeah, Grant. Yeah, put it in simplest radical. I mean, in the book, they might tell you to round to the nearest tenth at times, but on the tests and quizzes, I, majority of the time, will tell you simplest radical if you can. You'll see in a couple sections where these types of problems you're actually going to round because you're going to do trig with them instead of 30, 60, 90s. Um, but for now, I would say put it in simplest radical. Okay? Any questions on that one? Okay, this one is very similar, but notice the difference. The first one, they gave us the side of the figure. This one, they're giving you, what do we call that? The radius, okay? So when they give you the radius, it's slightly different. Um, if I draw every radius in, it's a triangle, right? We have three congruent angles here. How do you find the measure of that angle? 360, what do you do to that? Divide by, three. Divide by three. So that means each one of those angles is 120 degrees. Okay, well, let's draw our apothem in. What did that just do? Took that 120, <laughs> cut it in half, right? So now this is 60. This is 90, which means this is 30. So you have a 30, 60, 90 again, but notice it's sitting a different way. So our apothem now is the L side, not the L rad 3 side. Do you see that? All right. Let's figure out what A is. And then we're going to call this X because we don't know anything about our perimeter right now. But that segment is not our perimeter, right? That's just a piece of our perimeter. We'll see what we do with that in just a minute. Um, so you're looking at a 30, 60, 90 triangle here where the hypotenuse is 4. What is A? It's 2, right? If this is your 2L side, then A has to be half of that. Um, so A would be 2. Okay, so we have our apothem. Now we need to find our perimeter. Do you see how you can find your perimeter? What is this length? The x. 
Yes, that is two rad three, okay? So you have to ask yourself, how many of those are there to make up my perimeter? There would be two to make up the side of the figure. How about the whole perimeter? There's six total. So you can do it that way. You can double it and then multiply by three, or you can just multiply by six right off the bat because there's one, two, three, four, five, six of those, right? So I'm going to take that two rad three and multiply it by six, and I get 12 rad three for my perimeter. Okay, so now I know my apothem, and I know my perimeter, and that's all I need to be able to solve this. Area equals one half times the apothem, which is two, times the perimeter, which is 12 rad three. And then we multiply that. Half of two is one, one times 12 is 12. So 12 rad three, how do you label it? Inches squared would be our area. Okay, any questions on that? Just notice it's different um, what they gave us. In this first one, they gave us a side of the figure, so you can find the perimeter pretty easily. Um, this one, they gave us a radius, so it was easier to find the apothem, but then you can find the perimeter using the apothem. Okay, um, so just be careful with what they give you and make sure you find the angle first. 360 divided by something. Most of what you're gonna do today is gonna be a hexagon or a triangle because you have to do the 30, 60, 90 setup. In a couple days, it'll end up being pentagons and decagons and other ones because you guys know trigonometry and we're gonna use trig to solve in a few days. Um, but for today, you're gonna see a whole lot of 30, 60, 90 or what figure would make 45, 45, 90? A square, right? If we had this figure and I drew in a radius and an apothem, this angle is 360 divided by four, which would be 90, cut in half, which would be 45. So you'll get 45, 45, 90s to work with if it's a square, or triangles will give you a 30, 60, 90, or hexagons will give you a 30, 60, 90. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. 